Hi guys, it's Vertis here and welcome to 3D Mutiny. Every month I go through our Discord users community work in progress forum. And before I get into the formalized feedback, it's something that I've been working on that I want to share with you guys. It's almost finished. It's a list of three PDFs, retopology tips and tricks in them, fundamentals of retopology, also a cheat sheet so you can always come back to reference like how to use poles and the importance of her animation, compression and stretching. It's all going to be covered in those PDFs for you to download. So I've just put together a list of the most common issues that I find when I'm teaching at university. So if you have those three PDFs, that's going to give you a lot of value when it comes into retopology tasks and also save you a lot of stress down the line searching for things. So the first bit of feedback is for this user and it ties quite nicely into retopology because the person's posted an example of topology. Now I can see that they've done a pretty good job, um, but one bit of feedback that I would give to this person they put on their art station is to present your topology in a different way. So for every quad that you've got here, it's actually been split into triangles. So that's usually okay because that's how the games engine is going to read it. Say for example, if you extract it out of Substance Painter, chances are it's going to give you this triangulated mesh. Um, the issue in lies that when you present this to someone, they're really trying to look at how good at topology you are. It can be quite confusing if all these little triangles are in there. So so just make sure you extract your model out of something like Maya, and then it's going to be easier for us to see the actual topology. People with experience can usually decode this, but it's a frustrating process to go through that. And especially if you're going for jobs, the last thing you want to do is frustrate the person who's trying to look at your piece of work. But in terms of how topology goes, I think you've got some good distributions here and you've kept to some fundamentals. One or two areas to improve around here, and I'll go into that because it's um, brought up a couple of artifacts, but I'll talk a bit about artifacts and, and the baking process for hard surface. So I really like the design. I think one thing that you've done well is that you've left some surface areas that aren't going to be too noisy. So it's a nice mix of details that someone can see, but then also resting in areas, some flat surfaces. If you are going to do that, usually what I suggest to people is make sure that these surfaces are displayed really well. Right now, for me, it's a little bit underscript to what this material is, whether it's some kind of like rubber or metal. So that might be confused because of the, um, the cornering and the sharpness of the corners, or it might be if it's metal it hasn't got much reflectance or HDR. So just try and insert uh, a couple of lights that are going to help you read that material. So in in a couple of the Marmoset videos, we go over uh, how to present your materials using multiple light sources. So maybe get an additional light source just so we can see some more reflectance here. Um, and that's going to present your flat surfaces much better. If I zoom in a little bit closer and people are definitely going to do this, especially if um, you're going for jobs, we're going to really assess how well you've done in terms of baking. Um, so I can see a couple of baking artifacts when it comes to the corners and hard surface baking can sometimes be quite difficult so it's a mixture of having good topology uh, good uvs and also baking fundamentals um, i suspect what's happened here is that the uvs might not be as efficient so what might be happening is that you're starting to get some pixelization that's coming up um, also it could be that the uvs on the hard surface aren't aligned so they might be at a harsh diagonal and that sort of brings out some more artifacts um, as a general rule of thumb if you basically want to nuke all those problems away and it's going to increase the visual fidelity anyway is that whenever you have um, a corner or a surface like this just put an additional bevel in there so that's going to help with a couple of things from a distance it's going to read a bit better so if we go to your zbrush file or zbrush file you can see that the high poly is quite sharp so you might want to think about just putting in an additional bevel in so that's going to have a better read from the distance but the added benefit to that as well it's also going to help with the baking process whenever we do uh, game engine baking say for example we have a low poly the surfaces are looking outwards depending on how uh, smoothed the edges are so sometimes it can look like this and if it's a smoothed edge sometimes it scans out this way now that causes problems when you have a high poly that's obviously got a slight bevel on it say it's a, a subdivided hard surface model now you can come in and rectify this with good low poly and baking fundamentals it's just about splitting these surfaces in the correct uvs um, but an easier thing to do is instead insert this bevel and what that's going to do on the low poly it's just going to give some directional relief for the surface to basically obtain some of that high poly texture information. So to people who aren't used to that process, that's a little bit confusing, but um, hopefully for the stage that you're at, you will understand uh, what I'm talking about there. Long story short, just put bevels in whenever you find uh, artifacts are starting to cause problems. I like the construction of the helmet. It's nice to see you've got some emissive elements in there. That's always going to add some interest. I think one thing that's happening here is that in contrast to the device that you've got over here, not sure if it's like 
like a sensor or it's some kind of camera or infrared. To me, what I'm expecting there to be is like some kind of lens. And that could be a really cool addition because then you can start to play and show off your material definitions. So your reflectance, and I think it'll just look better as a whole and just basically break up this gray section and add to the realism of the, the actual physical piece itself. If you want to increase the look and feel of the helmet, I think certain areas uh, down here are missing their edge. So for example, you've got this really nice meaty piece of hard surface here. We can see the edges and we can see the sort of embossments and extrusions there. But I think when it gets down to this section, it gets a little bit lost um, and a lot of the hard surface elements are looking quite flat and like paper. So it might be an idea just to emboss these out a little bit or add a small minor uh, extrusion. So that's going to do a lot of things. It's going to give you some additional AO. It's going to give you some nice normal map information. It's just going to be um, more interesting as a whole and also it'll give you more smart mask material access to edges and cavities and things like that. While we're here, also might be an idea. I can see there's a couple of uh, screws and bolts and I like this uh, little assortment here. The only thing for me is that it's quite unclear how the helmet is being put on and taken off. So say for example, are there certain latches and buckles? Um, if I saw this helmet, I, I basically wouldn't know the first step of taking off. So if you can somehow indicate, uh, you know, a couple of buckles or a couple of latches, that's gonna really sell the piece and the physicality of that helmet. That's a good um, rule of thumb in any sort of form of like sci-fi and hard surface. If the person looking at it can imagine themselves opening it, imagine themselves feeling it, um, then generally it sells it quite well. But overall, really cool piece. Um, and it definitely takes me back to the days where I played Destiny and Halo and like that. So, so well done for that. Here we have a likeness sculpt for this character here. As I always say, well done for taking on a likeness. It's a really hard process to go through. It's very unforgiving. Um, I think this character is really interesting. There's lots that you can do and work on. In terms of sculpting, uh, one of the first things I saw was the transition of different forms, as that's basically all the creases. So where the mouth uh, separates the cheek, you'll see that the curvature here is almost like it's been done uh, by a standard brush. So that cavity is quite broad. Um, when it comes to the facial features, and especially when you look into this character, a lot of his cheeks fat is actually overflowing like this and then coming back onto the flat surface which is his face and where his teeth are aligned it's really important to get this cavity transition really accurate um so it's gonna be hard to explain i'll do it in zbrush okay so let's say we're just uh reforming this sort of structure. Usually what happens is um, people get like a standard brush to bring out the cheek and then get a smaller standard brush to go on the inside. That's going to separate the mouth from the cheek. But then when it comes to smoothing and then as you slowly start to push and pull different parts of the clay, transition becomes quite smooth. Whereas when you've got characters, what you've got is quite a harsh and sharp transition. So one way to do that, usually for that area of the face, I like to use clay tubes and then just brush in an opposite direction. And if you continue to do that, what you'll find is you'll start to get like a little bit of an overflow or a waterfall effect. Um, so that's most apparent from the side. And if we smooth that, basically the transition that we're going for is sort of along the lines of this. So it starts to come down, bow around, but then it halts really quickly and then almost turns into a 90 degree angle, which leads back into the mouth. So if you really go for enhancing that structure, it's just going to come off with a better effect. Um, if there's any wobble, just get the trim dynamic and scroll up and down it and then combine that with a smooth. Now, if you're really serious about that fold, depends how the character has it. Usually with older characters, it starts to, you know, gravity takes hold and it starts to actually overlap the underskin. So to do that, quite simply what I do is just get a mask and sort of mask the flat surface of the mouth. It doesn't have to be too accurate. Then get a large move brush, and then just start to manually overlap this on top of the mouth. So instead of using brushes, you're almost actually simulating gravity. Then after that, you can come in and just smooth it away if it's a little bit too harsh. Um, but you can see this sort of effect. Now that's uh, much more physical, especially for this, this type of reference. So I'd be interested to see what sort of effect that has on it. Another improvement I see that you could potentially make is to do with the head shape and also the positioning and direction of the nose. So if you look at the reference, um, this is a pretty good three fourths for you and just to make a couple of observations with this character uh, usually what you expect and as sculptors we usually like to put this really harsh temporal line in his seems to be quite soft and you can see that through the highlight here so if we were going to draw lines over it it does actually arch over a bit um, also another observation you can make is basically the profile of his face he hasn't got 
to an extreme version of a brow. So you can see that from the side. So if we we're going to draw a light, nice curve here, he's actually got quite a rounded face from the free fourth view. And if you were to look at his cheekbones, um, they actually don't come out too much because they're obscured by the by the skin and the fat that leads from his um, his cheekbone here down to his chin. So you can basically draw a straight line and obviously we're going to have some skin and overlap there. So just taking a couple of those observations, um, I'll just reduce the squareness of the head. I'm starting to see um, a formation of a cube sort of come out here. That basically involve getting a trim and just taking away the squareness. Give that round effect to his cranium. Also remember that he's got this uh, rounded face that arches all the way round. Um, so you might want to reduce the size of his cheekbones that are popping out here and also that um, nondescript brow that he had. I'll just bring him here so you can see a little bit of a better comparison. So basically you just want, if I pin it here, you want to get this section and this section and just relax it down and inward slightly. And that's going to increase the curvature of the silhouette. Also give his um, face a bit more of a droop that he has, especially with the older character. So hopefully you can see um, the difference that would make or just sort of imagine it. Maybe I can sort of simulate it with a smudge, but it's just involving bringing this down slightly. And then also with the corner, just bringing that in. Then with the top of the head, obviously just getting rid of a little bit of that squareness and making it more rounded. Um, and that just with those very, very slight details, you can see how the curvature is faced is um, suiting the reference a bit more. Um, so the next point is basically where the nose is positioned and the angle of it. So if we were going to take the nose on the sculpt here, we've actually got quite um, a sharp nose or one with an acute angle. Now that's mainly caused by where the nose is going back into the head. So if we locate it, the, the point is somewhere somewhere here. And obviously it starts at the top there. So I would just open up this angle that's presented and so make it less acute because what I can observe from here, obviously uh, the positions might be slightly, slightly different, but I can see it is that if we draw a line here, his nose is actually um, a lot more open in that angle and it goes back into his head. So if we were going to draw the origin points, uh, you'd obviously have the, the bit at the top here and it's just falling a little bit lower and that nose is widening out. Um, so in your case, what you'd be doing is just maybe get a very large move brush. We can try it with a smudge, it'll just blur it slightly. And we're going to just drag it down ever so slightly and that's going to open up the angle of the nose. And it's just going to be a little bit more accurate to um, the reference. So sometimes this can be a good process, just getting a smudge and then starting to budge certain elements of the, the character around and then interpreting that back on your ZBrush. Um, the next section I observe is basically this area and on the reference it's related to that. Now I think that the issue that's happening here is that um, this mass isn't actually connected to to the mandible it's actually a connection of his chin to his neck and that's where all the fat I think um, part of the illusion that's happening here is that you've incorporated it as part of the um, the mandible structure and the muscles here. So this kind of muscle is basically poking out and giving him that very musculature look. Um, when in actual fact, if you look at the reference, a lot of that mass and structure is just coming from fat and bagginess. And then a lot of it will also bleed back into the neck. Obviously he's rotating, so it's a little bit more taut. Um, but on this example, you can see that it's mostly ne neck fat that's leading back into his neck. Here's another example example so you can actually see even in this instance the skin is under torsion because of that mass that's being pulled downwards and it's actually stretching his skin this way you could blend that back into the neck also at the same time maybe even put those striations in I think it'll give a nice effect get some clay brush just bolt this up so you can't see a definition for the neck so much uh, and maybe put some of those skin folds and rotations to ind indicate that his skin's basically lost that uh, elasticity a lot of people's age and character usually is formed in the neck just as a funny caveat if you see someone with um, facial plastic surgery uh, one way that you can actually tell their actual age is by looking at their neck. So you look at the, the skin wrinkles and how much the skin is sagging. So just going over that, remove the squareness, uh, sort the silhouette. At the same time, you'll be bringing the cheekbones back and inwards. Uh, you'd also be readjusting the position of the base of the nose. That's going to open up the angle. I would then just reincorporate the chin back into the neck and include any of the, the fat that is built up from that character. Um, also at the same time, you might as well put the, the skin folds that are present at, underneath of his neck. Um, so just insert those here. Those usually, you can see them from the front. So you're not going to have such um, a harsh shadow. And then it's just going to look a little bit more accurate to this character. So moving on to this character, I think that the skin rendering is really good. So for example, um, how the specular highlights are showing and basically how the pores are presenting through that with the normal maps. So in terms of um, eye rendering and skin rendering, I think it's actually coming across quite 
quite well. One thing that is frustrating me slightly, I don't know if it's meant to be for the design, but the um, the mask or the component that's attached to his face doesn't look like it can move in correspondence with his jaw. So say, for example, I'm, I'm somewhat expecting kind of hinge to be here so that he can open and close it. It could be that he's bound in that pose, but it doesn't make too much uh, mechanical sense. And that can obviously be quite frustrating to, to a viewer. So it might be an idea just to work out some separation here or do a slight reconstruction um, of how this is all kind of like connecting and opening together. Next, I have some um, advice on basically like the transition of soft surface to hard surface. Um, so usually 2D concept artists will tell you a little bit about this. The assumed direction of like where a line is going. So right now his um, his lip structure is basically vanishing into this point and it's quite harsh. What's an idea to do? Display where the corner of his mouth is and actually have that as a tr transition point. So say for example his corner of his mouth just be showing enough here and his lip will be curling upwards um, and that will just give a nice visual effect to show that those two components have been separated or that he is actually missing his physical jaw because um, right now it just basically vanishes and it's hard to assume what's happening there. We can expect that there wouldn't actually be much movement there in terms of him opening his lips or like uh, doing any form of expression. But if it just curls ever so slightly up, then there's um, new access for like different expressions and different facial muscle structures to actually activate around that structure. Next one I look into is just the transition of how these are connected onto the skin. In terms of texturing, I just expect there to be a little bit more reddening and a bit more veining uh, to be happening. I think you've already done that a little bit with the purple pools and different discoloration on the nose. So you just use that and enhance it around the area quite sore and been attached to hard surface. And in combination with that, you could uh, just add a little bit more sculpting to show the tension that's been provided there by that piece of metal being stuck onto the skin or the plastic or whatever it is. So especially around the eye, you've got quite uh, thin and loose skin. So it's a good opportunity just to have this, um, have more stretches and striations, especially for his crow's feet or the, the folds that happen at the corner of the eye. Um, maybe these could be directed in flow with that structure. And it's just going to seat it a lot better and give it more physicality. Um, in terms of the top sections here, I don't know if it's like attached to his skin or it's going into his skull. You might want to have a bit more of a, an embossment going on. So the skin is lumping up and it's scarring. Um, and then you've obviously got a decavity that goes in between the skin and the hard surface element. So that's just going to have a nicer interaction of like highlights and shadows because right now it's just one continuous um, flat surface. So you just want to give a bit of um, physicality to that. In terms of the eyebrows and hair cards, um, I'd like to see a bit more skin being presented behind the eyelashes. So a way that you do that, I suspect what's happened is you've actually manually painted um, some darker highlights, dark or well, darker shadows behind the eye. And that's going to give it its um, eyebrow thickness. So that usually works works at a distance, um, but when you do get up close, it then loses its realism. So what I basically suggest doing for that is just creating a couple of hair cards um, and you'll have loads of different hair cards. This is how we do it in the game. And then each one of those hair cards is just going to have a couple of eyelashes, maybe even one or two. And then you're going to position all those cards and then those are going to be used as your, your texture or the physical eyelash. So how that look, we can kind of manually do it here and you'd get those cards and then just position them in the direction of the hair flow. So once you've got an array of those, you can see how the purple is giving the eye effect and then you'll be able to see the nice skin texture beneath it. Apart from that, I think it's a, a cool idea, cool concepts, very similar to um, cyberpunk or cyberpunk S. It'd be interesting to get some um, neck elements and actually create a, a full bust and just see if you can improve the mechanics there. Next, we have some hard surface topology. It's nice to see some hard surface topology. No one ever really does it. They kind of get stuck into the um, the sculpting phase. So I saw the images. I'm assuming that this one is the, um, the high poly subdivided model and then this is the game resolution just by looking at the tries. You've highlighted this section. I'm assuming you're talking about the edge termination that's going on there. Now that's totally okay to do. Uh, usually what I prefer is just to have that lead off all the way around. Um, sometimes what happens if you have sub surface smoothing with a structure like that, it can cause some artifacts and especially if you're baking. Um, so controlling verts that way can sometimes be quite annoying, but it's totally okay to do. As this is um, subdivided, I probably just expect a couple of more edge loops here and that would be to support the, the structure. Might be that you have already put those in and they're not uh, present just yet. I can see you've done a little bit of work on that, on this structure. So I can see some um, triple edge looping. 
I'd say the direction could be improved. So whenever you see a hard surface corner, ideally you want to, let's let's say that's a corner. Ideally you want to cover that with a couple edge loops like this. Now, obviously that can be quite confusing when it comes to sections that encirculate back on themselves. But with this one, what you'd have is just one continuous edge loop that goes all the way around panel surface. And then you'd have um, standard edge loops that just go in these directions like this. While you are working on that area, just double check the necessity of that kind of detail. Um, do you actually need those kind of loops and bevels because if we go on to this object it's actually quite small in regards to the overall prop and uh, when you are doing low poly you obviously want to make optimizations based on how much screen space or uh, screen pixels those are taking up so this might just be a bit too much low poly information for the kind of details that's there what i suggest doing is just uh, finding areas that you can make optimizations just putting you know putting a vert up this way getting rid of your um, edge loops that are redundant that aren't actually giving any structure so say for example there's quite a few here that can just go just be a flat surface and as you are baking this entire cylinder um, I would actually just question how much of the silhouette is required here so if I look at the surface it's actually quite flat anyway so you could actually just get away with baking this onto a flat cylinder and save all that kind of intricate detail diagonal edge looping um, that you'd have to put in there to maintain that kind of silhouette structure um, so maybe just experiment with baking you'd be surprised how much normal map information how much fakery you can get out of but you might be halfway through optimization it seems that you've optimized the the larger sections and haven't optimized this so maybe you're sort of like halfway through that next is this character i think it's a really cool selection you've got multiple pieces of cloth to play with and they've all got different textures nice um hard surface elements combined with leathers with straps and stitches um, in games we love stitches it kind of gives that physicality um, if I were to have a guess that this character was actually its main intention was for a game um, although I'm unfamiliar with the concept so lots of cool work to be done on a selection there I think your sculpt is looking good the only thing that I might observe is that the quilted section of her skirt here is potentially a little bit too long in, compar in comparison to what we've got so if you were to pose this character I'm somewhat assuming that the length of this would cause problem with her knee whereas the pose that she's got here it seems to be just like resting quite high up her thigh um, so maybe just have a look at the, the distances there and it's going to be really important to get those sizes first especially because she's got um, a quilted texture design here so it's not like we can move the low poly after because you're going to get lots of distortion there so it's really important to get the high poly scale and structure first um, in order not to distort the kind of textures that we put on here because otherwise if there wasn't a texture I wouldn't care too much we would just sort of like stretch that to fit in terms of the face I think the skin date detailing is good um, and the overall structure one thing that really pops out to me is the placement of the eyes um, so the eyelids placement is going to be really important when it comes to the pupils and sort of the expression that's being given I think one of the primary issues here is that the eyeball where it's located in the head it's slightly too high in comparison to where um, the person's eye socket is so if I was going to draw the eye socket from what I can see on the sculpt it's kind of giving this shape um, and basically the eyeball is sitting really high up in that eye socket so you just want to bring it down um and that's going to inherit fix the kind of like pupil positioning the incorrect pupil positioning you've got here so with this character i'd expect it to be just sort of around there halfway in between the top lid and the bottom of the lid while we're on the head it feels that the the size of the face is slightly enlarged comparison to the thickness of the neck so it's basically um giving this stylized effect almost whereas when i look at the concept she does have a slightly more realistic proportions like if you're gonna gonna estimate the size of her neck in comparison to the head that is um like very realistic proportions so in your examples you'll just want to reduce the size of the head slightly and your main focus is it to reduce the surface area this section which gives um, the look of a large face and also around the forehead so your main primary goal is to basically keep the features somewhat the same so the mouth the nose and the eyes and then just reduce the size of some flat surfaces and then it should be a little bit more in line into this character you know if you look at her she actually does have quite a pronounced bulky lips um, whereas on your character they're a li little bit more thinner and a little bit more um, stylized and sharp just decide if you want to be a little bit more accurate to that concept but uh, overall really cool next we have this character um, and at this stage I'm assuming it's a bit of a block out now obviously this um, concept is very busy and there's lots of uh, interesting straps hard surface elements to be playing around with um, the only thing I'd be wary of is just note that uh, complexity doesn't necessarily indicate 
interest. So basically the theme of this character is it is very busy. It's not something that I usually go for. I usually have uh, areas of rest. So say, for example, getting rid of a little bit of detail, because sometimes it'd be a little bit too overwhelming when you look at something. Um, but I appreciate that's what person's gone here for. And also a lot of the silhouette is being lost. Um, so a lot of the body is being lost by these sort of like buckled elements that are overflowing. So it's a very busy design, but um, it could definitely be interesting to practice on in, in ZBrush and especially for low polying, unwrapping and baking. Um, you'll definitely have a lot of fun there. So while you are preparing the model, um, a couple of things I do straight away is just open up the legs slightly more because there's so much equipment there. It's going to be difficult to go in the middle and also the riggers are going to thank you for that. And the same is true for the arms. Um, usually with military characters, we actually tend to take preference on a T-pose just because there's so much gear and functionality with the arms that they need. We also need to test that the, the straps and the shoulder elements aren't interfering too much with the animation of the arms. Um, so bring these arms arms out at least two but by preference a complete T pose uh, just means you can come under and add additional loops for animation and also if there is additional um, complexity when it comes to the bodysuit you can actually get under there start to sculpt it sculpt to start and start to low poly it but overall it's uh, a good start and I think you'll have a lot of fun sculpting this character